Dente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey, the used to enter evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have Something Awful is Happening in Morefolk. So, this creep pasta is a fairly recent one. It came out in March of 2023 uh, by Icy Dice on creepypasta.wiki or Jingen8206, as he's known on Reddit, no sleep. Because uh, when I was trying to pull up the creepypasta for today, I found that actually I found the Reddit no sleep version more than the creepypasta one on the on on Google. So, oh. um, and then I was actually able to like check that one and see like, oh, okay, there. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can check this out at creepypasta.wiki or creepypasta.fandom.com slash wiki slash something awful is happening in more folk. <laughs> Links are uh, in the description. That's the easier way yeah, to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You've never uh, said the entire yeah. URLs before. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I was just, I was just basically like reading off the, you know, the uh, creepypasta.fandom.com slash wiki, <laughs> which mm-hmm. is the creepypasta wiki address. Um, but uh, anyway, we're getting, we're getting caught in the weeds. Um, yeah, so you can uh, check it out there or on Reddit No Sleep. And um, before we do, before we get too far into the like the rundown and such, let's do recommendations. Uh, I'm going to recommend it. I am also going to recommend it. I'm going to also also recommend. It. Okay, okay. I was prepared for me to be like, I recommend it. Mikey was going to go, I don't recommend it. And then <laughs> Gamer was going to go, I half recommend it. I was like, and the balance was restored. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, 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 okay. I was, all right. <laughs> I'm generally the one that is most on the fence. Yeah. Well, I was just, I didn't, th- I was like, I, I read it. I was like, I'm going to recommend this. It's a good vantage spot, okay? Like, just leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. But yeah, no, I was just like, because like based off like after I had finished reading it, I was like, I'm going to recommend this. I don't know if my hosts are going to, my co-hosts are going to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I just don't know anymore. <laughs> like, Leave you guys guessing. keep me, I guess, I guess, yeah, you guys keep me guessing. <laughs> uh, but let's, let's find out why we all recommend this story. Uh, and let's start with the rundown. Starring The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, an outraged citizen of the town of Morfolk, who has tapped into the police database, uh, is forwarding this email, uh, apparently, to the bulk of his neighbors to get the word out about how the police are covering up a strange and terrible series of murders in the town. Uh, Jay, as they sign sign off with, even includes a transcript of one of the interviews of one of the victim's husbands, uh, a Mr. Middleton. As the interview goes, we find that women who are pregnant in the town are being targeted by this monstrous woman who appears under the couple's beds, knocks on the bottom of the, of the bed to seemingly alert the couple um, before coming out from under the bed and paralyzing the husband with like a crybaby style unearthly screech. And then clawing into the woman's belly to get at their unborn child then placing that child into their own womb through a slit in their in in her abdomen um killing the mother and the child in the process and then just i guess disappearing afterward like there's no sign of force entry as far as the the police are concerned um jay plans to spill more information and shed light on the police cover-up of these events and make the town more aware of the growing danger. Uh, they will send another email soon when they have more. Finn, for now. Uh, so I suppose we shall move on to... Everyone tolerates the Grammar Inquisitions! At this point, however... Mikey, do you have anything? I have a it story. Okay. 
Um, and now an it story with Mikey, the E stands for evil. Take it away. It's all a load of bullshit. It's come to my attention through my own investigation that this goes deeper than just the police force. Finn. <laughs> Honestly, that is a perfect, like, that, that encapsulates, like, the vibe. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is perfect. <laughs> That's like how you summarize this entire story into like yeah, a like, <laughs> I thought I thought my rundown was short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nicely done. Yep. And for those unaware, Mikey uh grabs all these sentences in the story that start with words that they probably shouldn't, like it's ends or butts, and strings them in together into a sentence for sometimes hilarious outcomes. Because there's always better words to use. Yes. Having said this is also dialogue. Well, it's it's <laughs> it's it's a, it, okay. So it, it's it's yes, it is dialogue technique, but it is it also states it is an email being sent out like on Moss to a uh, to a, to the townsfolk. So yes. I, I I don't know if it's necessary. Like honestly, I think actually grammar is even more prevalent when it's an email. <laughs> when it's a supposed email. <laughs> Or, or maybe or the very yeah because of spell check but or like i guess or maybe you could even make the arguments like well because it's an actual email it's actually more realistic when there's when there's spelling errors and stuff or when there's like gra- bad grammar because emails he's are not, notoriously like that <laughs> he's not caring about the grammar he's caring about getting the word out yeah that being said even through even saying that there really wasn't many actual grammar issues it's just yeah no like, like <laughs> it's ands or buts situation and, yeah, it's why I didn't have any grammar inquisition yeah. um, that I that I could like that I cared about. <laughs> so indeed. And now on to my section where I have fifteen grammar related things. <laughs> Are you <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> okay. I don't have any. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I was like, wow, <laughs> that would be impressive if you had fifteen. Mm-hmm. You just cared so much about about uh, about the grammar. Yeah. It makes or breaks the stories. Yeah, it, it, sometimes. Um, but uh, okay, I guess if that's it, uh, then I suppose we'll move on to actual thoughts. So I guess start with this one here. Uh, so this is in the interview, the transcripted interview. Uh, so Middleton. All right. Well, Jackie and I were in bed asleep. I remember waking up to the sound of thumping. I couldn't exactly place it, but I only, but I soon realized it was coming from underneath the bed. Jackie woke up right after that. I got out of bed and I looked at the floor. There was a fucking hand just sticking from sticking out from under the bed. It was a woman's hand. The whole time, the thumping from under the bed just continued and continued. So I I got to this part of the story and I was like, oh, God, this is literally nightmares from my childhood. (laughs) Oh, is it like hands coming up from under the bed? (laughs) Has always been like a nightmare, like thing for me. <laughs> you know, like a recent other episode. Didn't you also bring up how like this is hitting you on a personal level? Yeah, no. Th- t- this year is the year of the Vossen and the year of like familiarizing with like the stories on on a personal level. <laughs> yeah, really. Um. Yeah, like it's just like I, I legitimately have ha- like had like a slew like a it was like serial nightmares uh and i mean like serial as in like continuous like, like lucky charms right ish, no <laughs> i hate you so much <laughs> you've never had lucky charms nightmares <laughs> i hate you <laughs> um but like <laughs> repeat repeating nightmares oh <laughs> um of like hands either like slinking up onto my bed or like just dis like I I was not a fan of the thi- of, of of thing from Adam's family, let's just mm. say that um because <laughs> like uh, di- like disembodied hands just kind of like slinking up from under my bed and like crawling up into bed with me <laughs> or like or like hands like I'll be I'd be sleep uh, as a kid I'd be sleeping uh, away from the wall and I'd feel fingers or hands from the the space between the wall and the bed like tapping on my shoulder or on my back nice uh no <laughs> it was not 
<laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> Surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, it, it got there. There was like a long time in my, my my childhood where it was just like I could not sleep near the edge of the bed. <laughs> You probably weren't a fan of like Evil Dead or like that Idle Hands movie. I hated Idle Hands. Surprisingly enough, I was fine with Evil Dead. Um, but I think okay. I saw that. I think it's because I saw that later in life. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, Idle Hands was not a fun movie for me. Um, mm-hmm. Adam's Family. I liked Adam's Family as a kid, but like, and and like, I, I was never afraid of of thing in in the Adam's Family. It actually stems from a movie that I cannot recall the name of, and I've tried finding a couple of times. It's where like disembodied or like it's where a set of hands like detach off of their their owner i think like because like they died or something like that but they have a mind of their own and they basically start a disem a a, a um disembodied hand revolt against humanity <laughs> okay I can't, can't remember. Say I've what, seen that one. <laughs> I, I I remember watching it as a kid, and it like really like affected me because like of the fact that like hands could just like um like the hands even had a voice. Like talking to say, other. How do they communicate? Is it like it was uh, like a person language? <laughs> no, no. It was actually like it had like a psychic voice or something like that that it would like send. It would like send to other hands, and then like the hands would like kind of like in idle hands where it would like they kind of suddenly have like a mind of their own, and they would like drag their owners to like a sharp implement to cut themselves off. Wow. I was like, and I don't know what the movie was. I don't know if it was like a Twilight Zone or an Outer Limits episode or something like that. But like, yeah, it, it did like kind of I, I remember that that was kind of the the cornerstone of like my nightmares for disembodied hands. <laughs> but I can't remember the title of the movie. If if somebody out there knows what I'm talking about, please leave a comment in the comment section below or in the email. Like I would love to know if I could actually find this traumatizing horror movie again. If it's even a horror movie. It might not I it, I feel like it's a horror movie, but it might not be. Yeah. <laughs> But either way, you want to experience it again. First. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got. I mean, I'm I'm over that that fear now. But like, mm. I, I, like I remember, like, but reading this part, I was like, oh wow, this is exactly. Well, this is my. Oh, welcome to my nightmares as a child. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, my uh, my, tra- my 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 uh, childhood traumas aside, let's uh, let's go to the next one. <laughs> the next uh, quote and comments. Do that actually, because uh, oh, okay. I didn't have a note on this. Um. And this is in relation to a previous creepypasta we talked about. It might be yeah. the, the one we just talked about. I don't remember. In regards to the sound, how it's... I like how the sound is portrayed in this one compared to the other one, where I had to question what the sound was because it was only implied, and you had to kind of like read a little bit in to get it. But this one immediately said like there was a thumping under my bed. So you immediately mm. connect and know what that sound sounds like. Yeah. Instead of saying there was a sound under my bed or something where it's so vague that you don't really know what it could be. Yeah, the sound of thumping. And then like even later, it's like, oh, it's not thumping, it's knocking. Like they're knocking at the bottom of the base of the bed kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, okay. That's no, that's fair. Um, all right. So I'll, I'll move on to my next thing here then. Um, Middleton. Okay. Okay. She's, uh, or she... Uh, she opened her mouth or she opened her lips while staring at me. She didn't move her mouth or or move her lips or tongue. But she made this just this awful noise. It sounded like an infant crying. Just that sound coming out of from her lips. It is or it isn't natural. It isn't human. The crying sounded like if you took a recording of an infant crying and then looped it over and over again. It was the most horrific shit I've ever heard. Detective Casper. She didn't even move her mouth. You said it sounded like, it sounded as if the crying were coming from a, a recording. Did you happen to notice any audio playing devices on her person? Middleton. No, she was completely naked. She couldn't have hidden any, uh, h- hidden one anywhere. <clears throat> she couldn't have hidden one anywhere. That, that sound. It was coming from her, Detective Casper. I understand. Please continue, if possible. What happened after that, Middleton? I just froze. I couldn't move a muscle. It was like I was having sleep paralysis, or it was like I was having a sleep paralysis episode. My body was stiff as a rock, and she stood up and faced Jackie. 
So first off, sleep paralysis. <laughs> um, <laughs> in that alien sort of like <laughs> um but also like reading this like and like how like uh the 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 woman like comes out from under the bed and is like completely naked and like creepy and then like her her mouth opens up but like doesn't like emit doesn't make the physical like m- no like uh like muscle movements to like make noise but just like opens her mouth and like a speaker is blaring from her, her mouth or something like that it kind of reminded me of the Redeads from Legend of Zelda or Green of Time. <laughs> yeah. It's like when they when they get up and they like start screeching and you're like you're frozen paralyzed. <laughs> and then allowing them result, to like by the way. Uh, I'm actually playing through Breath of the Wild right now. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> to, to, to try and finish like to try and uh like I want to finish that before I, I consider getting a switch and then you know Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I Zelda is on my mind. I and saw that there was like undead like enemies and I, I, I looked there? up to see if those were actually the redeads from uh Ocarina of Time. Yeah. But well, no, cuz well cuz there are actually in Zelda there are two types of redeads. There's the ones with the that are like all naked like the like, cadaverous looking corpses uh with a mask. Like a yes. wooden mask. The one that we we like we from the 90s grew up with with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Dreamers. Yeah, the screamers. But then there's also another type of redead in the Wind Waker games that doesn't have a mask on. It's just this like cadaverous, like creepy, like corpse walking around with a mm-hmm. with with some things. So, um, I think that's a Gibdo. No, 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 no. It's it's still a, a redead. Like, oh, hang it's on, still called a redead. Yeah, they just oh, okay. they redesigned it for Wind Waker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's basically uh like it's same kind of thing it's um oh wow they added oh they have like a bunch of oh hang on <laughs> and now i'm going falling down a uh, rabbit hole yeah um yeah so like that when i read this is like i have just been i've recently been playing zelda so i was like of course i'm i'm now like seeing like oh so this thing's like a redead <laughs> a little bit yeah mm um however a little bit more on like its abilities and stuff of that uh uh in in a moment uh with this quote here detective casper please mr middleton i know you must be hurting please stay focused or you'll upset yourself further what did you what did the, the what did the suspect do with the child middleton she 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 tore in her own she tore into her own abdomen she tore her stitches apart and opened her own abdomen, her own womb, and she forced our baby inside of her. She fucking, she fucking, oh dear God. So, year of the Vossen, like I said earlier, I could easily see statting this monster out in Vossen as like maybe some kind of like a revenant like entity or like an, un, or like a reverse miling. Um, for everybody out there, a miling is basically the spirit or like mo- uh, like a, a, a supernatural entity created from unbaptized stillborn children that aren't given a proper grave or name. Um, so basically, this is just the mother of mylings. <laughs> um, actually, that might be a perfect name for it: <laughs> the mother of mylings. A little bit, yeah. Um. And heck, it doesn't even have to be Vossen. Like, I could see this being used in other horror systems like Esoterrorist, Fear Itself, Dr- Delta Green. Um, though I'd make sure my players were okay with this, like, level of, like, graphic body horror. <laughs> yeah, especially in regards to, like, children. Yeah, like, uh, well, pregnant women and children. Like, that's definitely something, like, I'd, wa- I'd, I'd want to ask, like, make sure everybody was on board for, like, or if that was, like, an X card for them. Like, I don't want to squig people out in real life too, like, so bad that they don't want to play games with me anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the scenario seed is basically right here. Like, a small town being terrorized this by this seemingly supernatural serial killer. Um, and it's like this undead mother looking to claim children taken from her, or maybe that, like, she died at still, like, died during childbirth, like, during a C section or something. And that's why she has, like, the abdomen wound. Mm-hmm. Um, in Esso Terrorist, there's a campaign setting actually for getting information for your mister, or even getting it, basically getting the scenario from 
or from a, a mysterious radio station that that intercepts uh, police calls. So that that seems to fit the story nicely with the what with the the leaked police report info like plot point that we have like or plot device that we have kind of uh, in the wraparound. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, we have this uh, the I believe this is my second last uh, note here. Um, so end of transcript. So like yeah, we get that whole transcript of the interview, and then end of transcript, and then we get the uh, the uh, Jay's talking again. Funny how the official record is still being kept secret, huh? These bastards know what they're doing. Um, so, and and this is also like in regards to like Jay's perspective and attitude towards the police in in more folk. Um, in his like wraparound material, like at the beginning of the of the story, and then at the end of the story after the like kind of around the transcript, um, while he comments or like so like while he comments about wrongdoings and corruption, I didn't really get much of a malicious intent from the police in that interview. Like in the interview we get, like I was kind of expecting them to be more like volatile or even like more like kind of assholeish to Mr. Middleton. But like, they uh, were first blood kind of cops. Yeah, like first, yeah, yeah, like first blood kind of cops, or like any movie, or, or like, like I, I actually recently I watched a a uh, I found footage film a while back. I can't remember the name. I, apparently, I can't just remember names like titles for movies anymore. But it was about like a like uh, it was the whole thing was like a wraparound. Uh, ha- had a wraparound of like a police interview with like the one survivor, and then. Like it would periodically show footage from like the uh, like well, the from like the cameras that they were using uh, when they went down to these sewers to like investigate some some mystery about the city, and the the cops were like basically just hammering on this guy trying to get information for from him about what had happened because they they were sure that he had done it or like or it, that's what it seemed like. And then by the end, it's like no, they were just looking for a patsy. They were looking for some. They were trying to basically like uh, convince the victim that he actually did it. <laughs> yeah um but and and that kind of where it showed like the police corruption but in this i didn't he- i didn't really get that at all from the police uh interview like it was they were being supportive to the victim of this murder it was a little unconventional because they 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 even state they didn't uh uh have the psych- a psychologist show up to like help the the victim they wanted to get the information fresh Mm-hmm. Um, so like that was a little unorthodox, but like otherwise they were being very like supportive. Like, do you need to take a break? Do we need like uh like take your time, Mr. Middleton? Mm-hmm. Like every bit of information helps. Like I was surprised like how like understanding they were for like this interview compared to like the other like the the attitude we're getting from Jay here, where it's just like uh, like here's an interview to show like how assholeish and bastardy the cops are, and then like we get it's like it's like are you are you okay, Mr. Middleton? Like we we're, uh, we need... some more water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like <laughs> it was very dynamic. Like donuts, you like some donuts? We love donuts here. <laughs> exactly. Like it was yeah. it was that kind of vibe. It was like very contrasting, and I don't see that as a problem. Like this this I'm not actually saying this uh, like pointing this out as like being a bad thing in the story. Um. Because it's just like, I like this kind of contrasting perspective or like viewpoint that we have. Like we have this truth seeker character, this like kind of raving conspiracy theorist sort of dude send, spreading the word, spreading the truth to his, ta- to his, to his fellow citizens mm. about the, about police corruption and about this like serial killings and stuff like that. And then like we get the actual like document or the actual transcript that he says like, this is proof that like the cops are corrupted. And then you, you read it as like, I'm not seeing much corruption. I mean, I'm just seeing some police officers doing their job, um, trying to f- get gather what information they can for this really fucked up mess they found themselves in. <laughs> Here's the thing. You're not seeing the quote unquote corruption on file is the thing. This is the recording of what was there. So this could go two ways. Either A, yeah. um, this is the recording, and then after that when he's off the record, that's when he's starting to be an asshole and start threatening him or whatever. Or B, which is probably the case, um, the assholeness is just um, the fact that they're covering this up. He doesn't need to be a jerk to yeah. cover it up. He, so he's going over all the things he's supposed to do, listening to the victim, writing down everything, and yeah. he's like, yeah, okay, and then just... But it doesn't get leaked out because it gets covered up. That's the yeah. assholeness. It's not being a jerk it's not telling the truth and but, letting everyone know what's going on 
True, but like the uh, like you're saying, like the, the them covering it up as an asshole. Thing. I don't think it's actually an asshole thing. I think that, again, that's just part of their job of like wanting to keep things under wraps for now and let themselves like being able to like uh, um, take care of the situation. So and, and not like cr- not create a a panic in the town more oh, than there already is. That, I'm not saying <laughs> that I think they're assholes. I'm okay, saying yeah. that Jay thinks they're assholes. Yeah, yeah, and again, like I'm not saying that as a bad thing. That like Jay, oh, like how dare Jay, like think this way it's like no this is a perfect like because this is ha- what what an actual person would probably do like like who somebody who would actually like go, be able to like hack into like the uh or like tap into um uh, a police database or find their way into a police database um to like find the truth like that's the kind of thing that people do all the all the time in like in real life like leaking information from like of like cop reports and stuff yeah and like it's definitely that kind of person like that jay is um, so it's, it, it's, it's also a trope in horror movies. Like it's, it's that conspiracy theory guy or like that guy who's like trying to get the word out about like the monster and like the police are covering it up and he's like anti-authoritarian. Like that's a trope in horror movies and horror media, but it's also grounded in a, in a, in, a, in reality where in, 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 especially in our society nowadays where like we, there are people, there's a lot of people out there that don't trust authorities. <laughs> Yeah. And like think that they're hiding things and like like and believe in their corruption, some of that. And most of the time that's true, but <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah, the I, I found that like I was like I was expecting like, when I when I got to the beginning of the story and he was like and Jay was like going on about like how like the corruption, and then I got into the interview part and like not seeing any of that corruption, and then getting to the end, I was like, okay, so it's not that like we're actually supposed to see any corruption on the in their interview. We're just getting this. Uh, we're this is really just getting the the kind of perspective of Jay kind of bleeding into his uh, his writing here, <laughs> or into his uh, into his uh, email to the townsfolk. The uh, thing we're, is we're getting the cops yeah. aren't telling people that there is apparently a zombie like woman that is killing pregnant women. Yeah, what I would and... like to see <laughs> is what the cops are saying about the murders. Like, are they? saying that there's a serial killer going around? Are they, like, mundanifying this? Or are they just saying that these are just random murders? Or are they not even acknowledging it? Yeah, are they covering it up, like, full? Like, are they are they keeping it, like, hush-hush, like, completely? Yeah, like, um, they're not even dead. Like, yeah, like, they're, bri- or, or, like, they're bribing, like, uh, yeah, exactly, like, because the, the, we do say that they're be- um, the, the husbands are being bribed, so we're not seeing that in the interview, but, like, that's probably, that, that's likely happening of some kind of, like, the the police telling the, the husbands or the, the, survive, the, the surviving victims to, like, keep things on the down low or and then like i i'd be i'd be interested to see um i guess uh if jay like were to post like a, a newspaper clipping of like of the more folk times <laughs> um show like like uh what what the newspaper show uh like what what the newspaper has on like the police statement um yeah. and how it differs from like this interview like i'm like like are they actually like saying that there's some kind of like serial killer in the town or like are they completely is it being completely hush hush? Mm. Um, I, I guess this kind of goes and dives into my next comment here, which is like, I like it says like there'll be more. Um, uh, like this is not the last you've heard of me. Signing off for now, Jay. Uh, at the very end of the story, and I was like, I really hope there we do see more. Like this is a great primer for a series of stories, or even just like a, the setup for one big story mm-hmm. regarding this this entity that's come to Morfolk and. Finding out that it's also on it's it's a this is on Reddit No Sleep. It seems like uh, perhaps Icy Dice is planning on writing a few more stories or like basically writing this as a series. Um, with uh, with Jay chronicling the this this entity that is kind of stalking around more folk, and I'm here for that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's basically my my actual thoughts. Like I I kind of getting back to brass tacks on what i was thinking what i was trying to explain with the um uh the previous comment um i liked the the contrast because it it made sense in terms of like reality of like not trusting the authorities the authorities like covering things up but also like we get to like, even in the interview it seemed like a reg- like it seemed like a, a a a realistic kind of interview like you wouldn't be they wouldn't be like super aggressive to this like trauma victim <laughs> Yeah, especially when it's on recording. Exactly, yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's the end of my actual thoughts. Uh, Mikey, these stands for evil. 
Let's see here. Uh, so, my first actual thought here is Detective Casper, the friendly ghost. God damn it. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. It, it is a name, but yeah. <laughs> there is possibly a ghost in this story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing. It's a supernatural task force. Guys, it's a supernatural task force. We cracked it. <laughs> Detective Casper doesn't even work for the police station. <laughs> he's just he's uh, Casper's infiltrated this uh, this police station as a detective to get information for the supernatural task force for this creature that's stalking more folk. <laughs> yeah, or this actual serial killer, not a supernatural creature at all. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. Uh, so my next actual thought here, I have a quote. She, uh, she opened her lips while staring at me. She didn't move her mouth or, or move her lips or tongue. So, uh, this, uh, in a little bit confused me because yeah. it's saying she opened her lips, but then didn't move her lips. So... Opened her mouth. I, yeah, yeah. She she made, she opened her mouth, but didn't like pr- continue opening her, like like m- like moving her muscles around like to like how we talk. Like we have to move like things around and stuff like that uh, to make sounds or to articulate sounds. Yeah. So like that's what I think it's it's saying. I understand. I I get what you're saying though because like when I read it, I was like, I I had to like it, it took a second. I was like, okay, she pr- it probably means this. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. But it is confusing when you when you read it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got it because um, somewhat recently, cultists, I believe you brought up how that is a terrifying kind of visual, having someone <laughs> have their mouth wide open and not saying a damn word, but they're making noises. Yeah, where yeah, when they're just like laughing, but or they're they're articulating the mouth movements to laugh, but they're not actually like, emitting sound. Uh, oh that yeah, was from yeah. Oh okay, it was a little different than how I remember, but it's similar. Yeah, like yeah, it, yeah, like there was um like yeah. Um I think that was from the uh most haunted or the the most dangerous ghost spot in North Canto. That was the episode we did. Yes, I believe so. Yep. All right. And then my next actual thought, I have a quote here. Uh signing off for now. Jay and when I read that, I was like, does J stand for Jack, a.k.a. the unborn baby? <laughs> is Jack, <laughs> J and is Jack, who's actually a miling, <laughs> trying to get revenge on the miling mother, the mother of milings. <laughs> There's a lot of J related names in the story, to be honest. There are. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Did we ever get what Mr. Middleton's name was? No. Probably Jeremy. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> Aussie, Mr. Middleton could have just been Jay. <laughs> I mean, maybe. It, it's, it's very possible. It, it's possible, yeah. But yeah, there are a lot of J a, a lot of uh J's names in this one. Mm-hmm. Also, isn't Jay the main character in Marble Hornets? <laughs> oh. Is Jay did Jay survive the Marble Hornets show or series and uh and is now like dealing with supernatural inter- uh, uh like uh, situations in in his new hometown <laughs> 10 <Yeah>. years later? <laughs> Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I honestly thought the same thing. <laughs> oh, really? Well, to a point, yeah. <laughs> Not okay. to the point that you're going, but yes. I, I was also just being silly with that bit, but yeah. How dare you? I know. Mm. That's your jobs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's the end of my actual thoughts. Okay. Gamer, you're up. I suppose I am. So first off, in regards to the creature herself, uh, she's reminded me a lot of a villain in a modern retro horror video game called Bloodwash. If anyone knows, oh about that shit, you're right. No spoilers, but in in that the serial killer in the game is called the Womb Ripper. Yeah. 
so I, from this point on, I will be using that to name this creature because the creature is not named. <clears throat> so I have the because I, I I'm into Vossen. I calling it the the mother of Mylings, and because you you're a gamer and and bloodwash and you and like it, you familiarized it with bloodwash, you're gonna call it the womb ripper. All right, cool. Indeed, yes, that's fine. Mm. And um, spoilers a little bit of about the game. It's it's relatively close to the villain in this, in a way. It kind of is a little sort bit, of. a little bit. Not, not, not. It's not like identical. No, of course not. But yeah. there are some parallels, a little bit. Yeah. But either way. Uh, moving on. Mm -hmm. In regards to uh, the womb ripper making like a a baby crying sound without moving her lips, she does have like a big sewn up gash in her stomach. So like. I think we know why she's able to make that noise now. So we'll put a tape recorder in her. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> Gamer, what was that what was that guy that fights uh Zendavi? Oh fuck. It's from Zendavi <laughs> from the from the from the awesome short film Zendavi lives. Like Uncle <sighs> Fuck. Googling as fast as possible. It's, it's Father Louis Ambrose. No, that's perhaps? no, that's the that's no. the priest. Nash Crothers. Yeah, yeah, Uncle Nash. Yeah, yeah, there we yeah, go. We need Uncle like this. This the, more folk needs Uncle Nash to swing by and deal with I, this. Uh, headbutt this... a door open and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get in my fucking way. Headbutt the door open. <laughs> uh, but like, but like, honestly, like now I'm seeing like because because we're like again because it's like a a gruesome like baby killing kind of thing. Yeah. I'm now thinking of that because like in Sandavi lives, there's the possessed baby. <laughs> yes, indeed. God. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, in in regards to the um. Almost an interrogation. The uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's exactly not an interrogation. <laughs> yeah, I, I like what you were saying before. I like how the officer was being kind, supportive, giving the option to take breaks, and um, and that the breaks were actually taken. Like it's not like it adds more real. Like, no, no, I'm good. I can, I can, I'll, I'll bear with it. <laughs> yeah, like that kind of thing. the yeah. fact that there actually are breaks in the story adds more realism to this because considering yeah. what he saw. I, he wouldn't necessarily be able to just sit down and do it in one shot. Yeah. You know, so I'm glad that it is said it was it once or twice that he actually takes breaks and I, has to come back later. I only remember the one, but there might have been another. Minute. Hang on. Yeah, there is just the one. Yeah. 15 minutes. But yeah, he does struggle a couple of times and he's asked for, for breaks, but he does physically take one as well, which is good. Yeah. Um, And then the the policeman doesn't believe him and I wish he believed, or at least acted like he believed in him for the whole interview. But at first, that's what I thought I wanted. Yeah. But here's the thing. This wasn't the first murder. If I base the kill order on the order that Jay told us in the beginning, which is yeah. Ellie, <clears throat> Sasha, Claire, and Jackie. That would yeah. mean that this is the fourth time the police have heard this story. And they already know that they're just going to cover this up anyways. So in hindsight, no. I like that he stopped believing when he did, right around when the creature was explained to be bloodless. It's almost as if the officer was go had like a checklist he had to go over to make sure it was the womb ripper. It's like, oh, okay, it's this one. Yeah, okay, I could just toss a rug over this one and get him out of here. <laughs> yeah. And maybe that is like, it, it's it, also, here's the thing, like, like I, I was saying earlier, like, there may not be corruption. Think on it now. This, is all like, there also could be some, like, subtler corruption in, like, like, they're being supportive and stuff of that just so they can like get what information they they can pump out of this guy. Oh, it's the it's the it's the um uh the womb ripper. Okay, let's um let's uh, let's wrap this up. We know what we're dealing with now. Like mm -hmm. And let's, personally, let's, yeah. I don't think I would refer to this as corruption in the police. Like obviously Jay is cuz he's upset, but basically the the cops are doing their job and then all of a sudden freaking SCP Foundation shows up or yeah. something, you know, and they're like <laughs> Telling them that they have to do this, so they don't well, have that, a choice. That is that is a bit of uh, a form of corruption, though. It, like in in the in the organization in the in the government. And Jay even says like it may not even be the police that are corrupt, but like they are taking orders from a from a higher organization or association. Yeah, it's like when the FBI so, shows up and takes over the uh, police investigation. That kind yeah. of. Thing. 
just exactly supernatural. Yeah, and and again, like that, it like I'm not maybe that is corruption. I'm I'm not 100 percent fluent on like law and stuff like that, or like on how like that kind of stuff works. But like, yeah, like you see that in movies, like where again, like it's 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 been taken out of our jurisdiction. Yeah, <laughs> like that kind of thing. And and there would be people upset that the police aren't doing anything because they are being told by like a higher by a higher government organization to uh, to not do anything about it. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. But so their again, hands, they're their hands. They're not necessarily bad people. Yeah, but Jay, but like people like Jay would see that as like they're being assholes and and like dickheads because they're not doing anything to help uh the the, the help the town. Yep. Definitely. So it's so it's realistic, yep. is what I was saying. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And that goes into my next note. There's good amounts of immersion in all this. Like this whole thing's covered up by the police, tied to actual murders that people in the area already know about. So I like that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And then my last note before. Uh, is this what it feels like when we're not in Derplin Police Department? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and then my last note. Um, I do wonder if Jack, the unborn baby, is actually dead, like how Mr. Middleton said, because like he doesn't know what happened. He just saw the womb ripper put the baby inside her, and then I guess she just left. It didn't actually say what happened. Yeah, it, she, well, she just walked out of the room. Or she just like vanished, maybe. Yeah, again, like it doesn't really say. Like, bed, he looked under the bed and she's gone. Yeah, she goes into the into like a uh, lint space or uh, um, uh, you go. It's like how like closet monsters like you, they go through the closet. They go through like a closet space, like mm-hmm. uh, it's like bed bed space. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, literally the uh, <laughs> the space between beds. <laughs> it sounds like a, like a complete overhaul mod. To that space. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Yeah, I'll bet it's blood wash, but like dead space. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I guess instead of a laundromat, and it's all like a, a, a bedding supply store or something like that. <laughs> in space, <laughs> it's a, it's an IKEA in space. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> There's an SCP like that sort of. Anyways, yeah, um. Anyway. But yeah. Uh. Either way, we don't really know what happened to Jack, the baby. Um, but considering that the, the womb ripper is somehow <sighs> animated while being like a husk of a human, there's some weird mumbo jumbo going on. So she may yeah. have like jacked in to the baby to actually continue to mother and maybe even birth it. Like, and turning probably, it into a monster, maybe. Exactly. Probably yeah. making the kid some kind of messed up monster. <laughs> Again, mother of mylings. She's just creating my she's just a myling progenitor. Mm-hmm. Um because yeah, like I don't like yeah, there definitely had to be some supernatural aspect going on if the baby is is still alive because she was it was probably prematurely C sectioned out of his out of its mother. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Messily. <laughs> Like we, the creature, the thing you, the 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 woman used hands rather yeah. than a scalpel to see section. But magically <laughs> enhanced hands. Yes, and like then like ripped the umbilical cord, it's reinserted, fine. connected, re- reattached it to hers. It's like, ugh. yeah, it's it's yeah, like this is definitely some some gross body horror going on. It really is, and that's great. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, that's in my notes until final thoughts. All right. Well, that is a good segue to final thoughts. Um, honestly, surprised this hasn't gotten much attention since March. Uh, on no sleep, at least as far as like I could find. Like, there's no comments on this story, and there, as far as I could tell, I uh, it doesn't look like there's anything that's been posted since, like as a sequel or like as a as a part two on on Red No Sleep and stuff for this. And even on like creepos.wiki, I couldn't find anything like that. There was like an addition to it or part two on IC Dice's like, um, like, uh, contribute contribution page. So, but like, I really feel like this is definitely like this would definitely benefit from a continuation, um, of what exactly is going on in Morpho. And you can even have it in like make it kind of epistolary, like the way this is like this is an email with an interview transcript. The next one could be like some na- some newspaper clippings to show like the the uh, the cover up the police are doing. Um, then you could have like other like some other things, uh, some some other like reports or some other information in a in a in a document style format. Or again, show showing Jay's like kind of conspiracy theorist sort of um uh uh like the way he the way he's operating of like 
getting information how he's getting information is through these like reports or through these like second uh first hand or second hand accounts of the situation um until like we maybe even get a story where jay himself comes face to face with this creature because like the police aren't doing anything about it jay's gonna just do it himself yeah pretty much um so like i i'm i'm really hoping that we get more um from from more folk <laughs> get more folk that was not <laughs> intentional <laughs> uh but it's it's it it it, it works so yeah that's that's why i'm going to recommend this um this was a good start i think it would do it would make it would be even better if there was more and i'm surprised there isn't uh more attention to this because this is a really cool like setup um but uh and also like since it's on reddit no sleep this actually like works for reddit no sleep because it is grounded in a reality in the sense that like it is a first person account like or like the like J- it's set up like jay is doing this as like an email like a uh, uh, kind of thing of like police corruption and there is a, a hint of some kind of sinister supernatural presence within the uh uh the situation it is actually surprisingly grounded compared yeah. to some of the other reddit no sleep stories i mean it doesn't handle even something awful is happening in morfolk as a title isn't quite like you know the obscene reddit no sleep like uh trope Blanks. of like uh, of like a full-blown paragraph for your title but yeah it's still a an appropriate title mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah um i i i recommend this and i hope uh icy dice makes or continues on and, and does some more stories set in this um uh set in this kind of storyline or this plot line so Mikey, these stands for evil. So, the this story is short. It's creepy, mm-hmm. um, and it's disturbing. <laughs> um, check, check, check. With, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that's uh, what you want in a creepy pasta because it doesn't overstay its welcome. And it doesn't go on explaining what the monster is. It's just there. And it's creepy. Um, So it's uh, still a recommendation for me. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) And Gamer. So for me, I have a strange set of final recommendations a little bit here. Because like at first, I was like... I really didn't write down much while reading this, which means either it was real good, real short, or I did it last second. Uh, granted, all are true, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, as, I, as I started to put my final thoughts down, I ended up like tripling the amount of notes I had written down, because I literally only had one or two things written down. Because when I read through the story, it just it went very smoothly, and I didn't have to question too much. I made the one silly uh, tape recorder goof, and then I read the entire story. Yeah. Because I was enjoying the story. I was into it. I didn't want to really stop just to write down stuff. But as I got to the end, I'm like, oh, I am writing down stuff. And the more I thought about it in my outro, the more I was thinking about the actual story and actually adding in more notes, which was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But as I brushed on before, not but, but as I brushed on before, uh, I like the immersion and the believability in this one. It has an angle to how this story could be actually happening in our real life. But it's just covered up and all that. Yeah, uh, The creature is properly mm-hmm. fucked up and interesting. I like that we don't get all the details because all we know is what Mr. Middleton saw. And he and- wouldn't have seen exactly what happened with his unborn baby in the end. He's also an unreliable narrator to a degree because he's recently suffered an immense amount of like mental trauma or mental and emotional trauma. (laughs) So, uh, and, and it even states like they haven't had, he hasn't seen a psychologist yet about like, or like a therapist yet about this, this situation. The, the cops are wanting to get the, the, the information fresh. So he could be like what he saw might be might not be exactly accurate so like there is the level of like for a mundane a mundane explanation to all this but it's definitely leaning hard into supernatural 
I wonder how mundane we can make this. Like, was there just someone under there that is a mundane murderer with like yeah. a needle full of some drug and it was like knocking oh. to try to get his attention, then just like stabbed him with the drug, but it like immediately took effect so he didn't even like remember that happened. But then he's seeing all this weird shit happening. Yeah, like I, some kind of like a drug, like maybe he like so somebody could have like again, somebody might be like uh like this is not the first time this has happened. So like somebody is like tracking pregnant women in Morfolk. Mm-hmm. They maybe like they go over to like the uh the local like like to the house's like ventilation and like put some kind of like ma- a gas in there to like kind of um or like some kind of some kind of like maybe some kind of compound in the you know, like mix it into the uh uh like next to the vent or something like that mm-hmm. and then have like a mask on uh to go yeah. down and go and then it's pr- I mean I've seen horror like real life like horror footage of like somebody like uh, in a clown outfit sneaking into somebody's like underneath somebody's bed to like sp- like jump scare them out like later in the night so like i've seen that kind of, like that's it it might be actually pretty easy if they're just like a really good break and enter like kind of uh intruder sort of person mm-hmm. it could also be like the sound might actually be like a mundane thing is like they do actually have a uh um a, a recorder but it's not like so much of, like and like uh middleton is is describing it as like a baby's crying but it might actually be an, a certain type of noise that causes paralysis yeah. Like also that, in regards to the creature being nude and everything, they could just yeah. be wearing one of those like morph suits, just like Ex- a skin colored one. Yeah. And there's just like a zipper in it where they put the baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's and, why and like, no and, or anything. Yeah, and again, like it, it would still be like hor- again, this is still like it's mundane, but it's still horrific because it's straight up a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. But um like yeah, the supernatural aspect of it is could be explained with some like some doing. Some like Nancy Drew Scooby Doo bullshit. <laughs> it was old man Smithers all along. <laughs> and that's just the Scooby Doo gang investigating this. Oh my god! Uh... See, I I kind of want to run that game. You guys are all playing the Scooby Gang. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's like Scooby Gang explores the Blair Witch Project um, uh, animated short that ha- that they did uh, to advertise like the Blair Witch Project on Cartoon Network. <laughs> really? Yeah. You know, wait, have you never seen the Scooby Doo no. Project? No. Oh, I need to show you that. <laughs> project. Yeah, it's so good. It's like they they go into the woods and like it's basically like a retelling of the Blair Witch Project, but with the Scooby Gang. <laughs> That's excellent. And and I think uh, Cartoon Network did it as like a Halloween special thing. Nice. Anyway, yeah, after um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like this could basically like be Scooby Doo all up. Is like this this is actually supernatural. This is a, this is a serial killer, and this this person is killing these these women and taking their children, or taking the fetuses of their children or the the unborn children. But they're doing it like using like technology or um or various like mundane or extraordinary or mundane methods, mm-hmm. and they're just really good at, at at infiltrating houses. Hence why the cops haven't been able to. Uh, find much sign of them like actually like breaking in if that does end up being the case i don't think i would be upset just because like no that is. <laughs> yeah like i think that would actually be really cool if that ends up being like the the, the zinger at the end is like mm. yeah but like I'd, I'd be fine with either like it could either be the mother of mylings or the womb ripper is the womb ripper even supernatural or is she uh, I, I, I don't want that might be spoiler sorry I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's like it's, 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 levels it's, of super yeah. It's 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 a slasher. Uh, is blood blood wash is basically a, like a slasher flick or like a yeah. giallo, like a like a one of those like seventies giallo films. Mm-hmm. So it is mundane where, the same way the Jason series is mundane. I'd say then that's uh, so like Jason. I'd say is more extraordinary, not mundane. Yeah. So like yeah. yeah yeah. So like it could be supernatural. It could be extraordinary, or it could be like su- like just just mundane serial killer and i weird it's weird that i'm saying it's this mundane serial killer <laughs> mm-hmm. like when that came out of my mouth i was like that is an odd statement <laughs> but um it isn't yeah, I, my work <laughs> no uh but yeah i would be fine like like you said like i'd be fine if if it turned out to be any of those <laughs> mm. but yeah uh speaking of i like the overarching <laughs> story of all this of jay wanting to expose the apparent supernatural creature that's targeting pregnant women in the area mm-hmm. and it makes me wonder if there's going to be a follow up and what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, all overall though, I really liked it. So uh 
masks off to you, Icy Dice. I wear no mask, but well done all the same. I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Jay. Jason Voorhees. My God. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense now. Also, is Jay uh, or is Jay just a nod to heavy rain? Jason, J- Jace, Jason, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll be I'll be going really stupid, so I'll, I'll stop. We all. Um, but yeah, okay, so um, yeah, roundhouse recommendations to the face. Um, and uh, that'll do it for this week's episode. So if you like what you heard, or if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below. As this gets posted, whether it be on Podbean, Facebook, YouTube, or Tumblr. Uh, we're all on Twitter. Mikey is at the E stands for evil. The gamer in yellow is at the gamer in yellow, but without that W at the end, because his name is very long. Gotta be. Yeah. Uh, and I'm at review cultist. You can also send us emails at al dente at gmail.com. That's A L D E N T E R I G A M O R T S at gmail.com. Where you can leave us suggestions for other creep pastas, SCPs, spooky things. You creep it, we'll peep it. Yeah. yeah. And if you'd like to help support our show financially, you can go to Patreon. Look up Aldente Rigor Mortis on Patreon <laughs> and select the back of the tier you'd like to support that. We have $2 and $5 tier with special episodes, early access, extra content. To our patrons that are helping support the show, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. And as always, we very much appreciate that. And to our listeners and the authors of these stories, thank you immensely. Because without your listenership, it'd be like screaming into the void. And Icy Dice, without your authorship, without w- if you didn't write these down and post them online for people to look at and enjoy and get spooked by or grossed out by, we really wouldn't have much of a show because we'd have nothing to talk about. So thank you. And if 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 please let us know when you're doing a second part for this because I, w- I want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, but until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I'm Mikey, the Sands Rio. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And this has been Al Dente Rigamortis. Sleep well.